Hi, welcome to story time today. Today I have Lassie here with me. I don't know if you remember Lassie. I got him a couple weeks ago when he was just a little puppy, but now he's so big. He's already almost six months old. And he reminded me of another story I have of things that grow and grow and grow. And that story is called The Reason for a Flower. But before I start reading this book, I wanted to show you that I'm in a little different place today. You can see some different things around me. You can also see it's kind of dark outside. I'm in a different place because I had something exciting to show you after the story and I couldn't do it during the day because it would be a little bit too light. So when we're done with this story, stay for an extra couple minutes and I'll show you something exciting I have. But first we'll read the reasons for a flower. This one has become a plum. And there's the flower and how it turns into a plum. Birds and bees. And these. What are these? I wonder what you see there. And these sip nectar from the flowers. And as they search for more and more pollen from the flower, the four goes to the next one and they explore. And there's the bees and they're pollinating. They're doing very important jobs. Some pollen travels in the breeze without the help of the birds or bees and very often makes you sneeze. From an anther, honest taman, to a stigma, honest tile. Pollen grains must travel and stay a little while, and then you'll see the reason. For each flower, even weeds, the reason for a flower is to manufacture seeds that have a cover of one kind or another. Some grow inside a juicy fruit, and it's not odd to find them growing in a pod. The largest one is a coconut. Seeds travel far and wide. Some even like to hitch a ride upon a bike or a shoe. Squirrel hides them and forget they do. Some have burrs that stick to the furs and travel at a gallop. There's lots of ways for seeds to get around. Seeds can settle anywhere they find water and sun and air, and then grow roots and stems and leaves. And here's some of the things that seeds might grow into. I wonder what vegetables you might recognize there. Some seeds grow up, 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 up to be trees. These grow where it's very dry. I wonder if you've seen any of these maybe around your house. This is something that they might have more in California. There's cactuses and succulents. And these grow where it's wet. And these you might see at the wetlands or at a pond. And these may not look like flowers, but they're the most, oh, sorry, they're the most important ones yet. Rice and barley and corn and wheat. And cereals we need to eat. And bamboo are a treat for animals who don't like meat. They are called herbivores. So all these animals have to eat all the all this that we just saw on this other page. Some of them do. Would you believe that these plants eat meat? And they are called carnivorous. So carnivorous is when you eat meat. And these plants can actually catch bugs and eat them.
The largest flower ever found grows in the jungle near our ground. A parasite clinging tight to the roots of that tree. Feed it, th and it's three feet wide, or maybe four, weighs 15 pounds and sometimes more, and has a nasty odor. Raflisa is its name. That's a big flower. 15 pounds, that's very heavy. But here's a flower that owns its fame to smelling very sweet, and scientists agree that magnolia seem to be a prehistoric family. Prehistoric means it's very old. This flower has been around for a long time. And there's a picture of some dinosaurs, so maybe this flower was growing at the same time as some dinosaurs. All flowers are angiosperm. That's an ancient Greek term. Here are just a few products made from them for you. And I wonder what you see on here that might be made of that, what you recognize. Plants that have no flowers are fascinating too. I wonder what you, if you recognize that. Mushroom. And this one has become a plum. And there's a flower. And it's slowly turning into a plum. And that's the end of our book. But before we end story time, I had something that I wanted to show you. So I'm going to stand up so I can do that. I'm going to take you with me. So I wanted to show you these plants that I have behind me. You might see lots and lots of green leaves and stems, but I wanted to show you something that's kind of exciting. <laughs> a while ago, these plants got lots of these little yellow flowers growing on them. And you can see these ones are really small right now. But the little flowers started to open up and open up until they looked a little bit like this. And when the flower was all the way open, it got pollinated. Remember, that's what the bees do. But sometimes there's other ways to pollinate it. And if the flowers got pollinated, it turned into something. And I want to pause if you have any guesses of what those flowers might turn into. Think about all the things it could be. Then I'm going to show you. They're still babies, but they're slow. Wait. Oh, I'm going to show you this one. They're still babies, but they're slowly turning into tomatoes. And this tomato is still green. And you can see this little tomato here. This is a baby tomato. It still has part of the flower on it. This is the, this used to be the flower, and then the tomato grows out of it. And then this tomato is getting a little bit bigger, but it's still very green. And so we'll have lots and lots of tomatoes here soon, hopefully. And maybe next time we talk, I'll be able to show you even more tomatoes. But that's all for today. Goodbye, and I'll see you next time.